Success means different things to different individuals. It comes in many different forms, and the idea of being successful for one person might not be the same as for another person. In fact, there are as many definitions of success as there are people on this planet. For instance, if you are a businessman, success may mean being among the top 10 companies in your industry, and if you are a student, success may mean getting distinctions and coming first in your exams. According to Earl Nightingale, success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. It is therefore very important for each one of us to define clearly what success means to us. And intention is another way of setting a goal. The difference I've found in intending versus goal setting is my attitude. When I set a goal I generally see it as something that has to get done. It is work. I'm dreading it a bit, but I have to get through it to get to where I want to be. Intentions, on the other hand, are exciting. I'm looking for opportunities for success. I have faith that they are coming, and I get very excited at even the slightest thing that points to my success. Every time I have something to do toward that goal, I'm excited. Let us say that success to us means becoming an outstanding manager. Most of the time, many people find it very difficult to know exactly what they want as an outstanding manager. One of the best ways to become clear is to make a list of things that we do not want as an outstanding manager. The more things we put in our list, the clearer we become. We do not have to focus on what we do not want to attract, but just examine briefly what we do not want. Once we have made a list of around 40 to 50 things that we do not like, we proceed by making the list of things that we do want as an ideal manager. The things that we want are the exact opposite of the things that we do not want. For example, I do not want to be a manager who is not respected by my team will be replaced by I want to be a manager who is highly respected by my team. I do not want to take wrong decisions will be replaced by I always take the right decisions in all situations. Action is imperative when given an opportunity. I've known people who have given me excuses for why they can't do something. For example, I knew someone who really wanted to attend counseling. The only problem was that his depression was keeping him from working as hard as he used to and that was keeping him short of cash, hence a vicious cycle. He couldn't afford the counseling that could help him work more efficiently that could enable him to afford counseling. He stumbled on a counselor offering free sessions as they were just starting out. He could receive counseling helping the counselor to move forward and helping himself to get back on his feet. Yet he didn't take action. This gets us nowhere. Action is imperative. Faith in success keeps us moving toward our goal regardless of how we feel or what is going on around us. It also keeps us positive and feeling good. It makes sense to have faith if only to feel good and be more pleasant to be around. But when you think about it, who would you rather give an opportunity to? But regardless of whether you believe in the quantum physics of it, the steps you go through are just logical steps that have been proven over and over to produce success. So when you see me refer to the law of attraction, know that I am referring to a collection of principles that have help countless people create success in all aspects of their lives. Many scientists and theorists from across the globe have come to the conclusion that everything is regulated and governed by a set of universal laws such as the law of cause and effect and the law of gravity. We all deserve to be successful in life and whatever dreams we have, we all have the potential to achieve them as absolutely nothing is impossible. We just have to follow the great advice of Walt Disney, who rightly said, if you can dream it, you can do it. The law of attraction is essentially a belief or theory that like attracts like, and that by focusing on positive or negative thoughts, you attract positive or negative results. Basically you attract into your life whatever you think about, whether you want it or not. So if you truly believe your thoughts, you literally have the power to consciously and deliberately choose what you want in life. What kind of money do you want to make? 
While the law of attraction has received quite a bit of publicity these days, the concept has been around for centuries and has been known and used successfully by many great minds throughout history. It has been written in books that there is evidence the law of attraction was used by Beethoven, Einstein, and even Jesus. Many wonder why it works, and there are reams upon reams of anecdotal evidence confirming it does. The law of attraction gained a lot of publicity back in 2006 when the film The Secret was launched, which was a documentary-type film where some of the leading experts appeared on camera to give an insight into what the law of attraction is and how it works. The film was good for the newcomer who knew little or nothing about the law of attraction, but at the same time, it really only touched the tip of the iceberg, and gave no reasoning regarding how this powerful law of the universe works, or its true origins. Law of attraction history. Many people associate the law of attraction with new age movements and similar practices. Unfortunately, modern media and uneducated bloggers and such like have help m-a-t-t-e-r-s-i-t it's important to understand that the law of attraction was referenced long before any new age movement and even before western civilization had even gotten wind of any of the universal laws we are all made up of the same energy dot we are all taught in school that all matter whether physical objects or living creatures is made up of the same energy called atoms the theory is that this same energy making up atoms is also a frequency created by our thoughts. Thoughts are magnetic energy and create a frequency similar to radio or smartphone. As you go through your day thinking, your thoughts are sent out into the world and attract like things on the same frequency. Picture yourself as a human transmission tower emitting powerful waves of thoughts that are changing the dynamics of your life each and every day. Karma also has reference to the law of attraction, with their underlying belief that you'll eventually be revisited by that which you've sent out into the world. Everyone has heard the sayings good karma and bad karma. This is where the sayings originate from. It was and still is their belief that if you are kind and compassionate you will be met with kindness and compassion and on the flip side, if you have been unkind and shown little compassion then you'll equally be met with the same so although not directly related to manifesting your desires through thoughts, as the law of attraction states, but you can see the closely related theorem of your actions and thought processes literally morphing into physical entities, meaning you are attracting into your life that which you are giving out. It was in the 19th century that the law of attraction had made its presence in the Western Hemisphere, where people had started to understand and treasure the power of maintaining a positive attitude and positive thought processes, and had started applying this newfound knowledge in their own lives. So it's clear that the law of attraction had been referenced and practiced long before any New Age movements started to surface. Many wise men, including the monks, understood that man's belief can directly impact their path of faith, as well as the journey they would take in order to reach their final destination.